Live, the Powerhouse Club Triple Time for Kids program presents It's Kids Back to Basics. This is the live call in program which teaches kids that there's more to life than having a good time. Get your Bibles ready. Here's today's Kids Back to Basics. And welcome today to another broadcast of Kids Back to Basics. We're talking about Halloween. Halloween, whose celebration is it? Witches have eight major festivals throughout the year. There are there are four are the solar festivals, one at both Equines, one at both Solicities. Uh, the other four almost uh, occur almost midpoint between the solar festivals. The most famous of these are Samhain, in which we call Halloween, Halloween to non-witches, and Beltane, May Day. Samhain, or Halloween, is the beginning of our new year, and it is the time when we can most effectively communicate with the dead. That is, quote, from an interview, Do You Know What a Witch Can Do, in the State Times Fun section back in May 13th, 1983. Halloween! The word invokes a number of responses. Every year as October rolls around, there are those that look forward to it with excitement and those that cringe and wish it weren't there. Some argue violently against it. Some yawn because they've heard it all before. Many just look the other way and go ahead with it. Some view it as an abomination, while others view it as a harmless tradition. What is Halloween or Samhain? What does it represent? And what should the Christian think about it, if anything? Now, we already talked about it last week. We went into depth as far as uh, the traditions, uh, how it came forth. And what I'm going to do is just basically briefly give you a synopsis of what we talked about last week. Halloween. Many think Halloween is simply a child celebration night of fun. Those who grew up participating in it never thought, uh, probably never thought about it any further than the fun of dressing up and going door to door to fill their bags uh, with treats. Now, the World Encyclopedia says, the World Book Encyclopedia says much of the same thing when it states, Halloween is a festival that takes place on October the 31st. In the United States, children wear costumes on Halloween and go trick-or-treating. Many carry jack-o'-lanterns carved out uh, of pumpkins. At Halloween parties, people enjoy such activities such as fortune-telling, hearing stories about ghosts and witches, and bobbing for apples. A little history is in order. The Dictionary of the Occult and Paranormal states simply, Originally a pagan festival of darkness, fire, and death. All Hallows' Eve was celebrated by the Celts of Northern Europe. Halloween was also an important date for the witch's calendar. Pagan, darkness, death, an important date for the witch's calendar. These words are clear and graphic, but let's search for a little bit more detail. And if anyone in here want to interject of what Halloween is, and uh, give, me, uh, give me a call. The number is 768-3688. But we're talking about it. The encyclopedia, it, which states man, myth, and magic, puts it this way. All Hallows' Eve, or Halloween, was originally a festival of fire, the dead, and the powers of darkness. It's the evening of 31st of October, the night before Christian festival of All Hallows' Day. All Hallows' Day commemorates the saints and martyrs in which I, in which I believe that the Catholics celebrate this. This is what Catholics celebrate. Mm-hmm. All Hallows' Day commemorates the saints and martyrs and was first introduced in the 7th century. Its date was changed from 13th May to 1st November in the following century, probably to make it coincide with and Christianize a pagan festival of the dead. All Souls' Day in the Roman Catholic calendar is November 2nd. It is marked by prayers for the souls of the dead. It is only in recent times that Halloween has been reduced to a minor jollification for children. And that is a quote straight from Richard Cavendish, Man, Myth, and Magic, volume number one, page 67, if you want to know. I want to go ahead and introduce our panel today. And our panel, as usual, Pastor Curtis is here with us today. And uh, many of you know who Pastor Curtis is. Uh, he's a, a friend of ours, and he's also my assistant at Powerhouse Club Triple Time for Kids and Powerhouse Club Sunday Mornings. Uh, Chris Robbins is also here this morning with us. He um, attends a church here in Baton Rouge, and we're just so glad that you came from Polly Johnson's uh, group. 
uh, uh, Straight Talk for Teens, and he's with us to, this morning, and uh, we're glad that he's part of uh, Powerhouse Club's Triple Time for Kids. And uh, what's your church? Uh, Redeeming Word of Life. Redeeming Word of Life here in Baton Rouge and House of God Ministries in Baton Rouge, and we're excited about that, too, that you joined us. And, of course, we have our station manager, uh, Mr. Uh, Reverend the Almighty, no. R- <laughs> John Santiago. Hello. And, uh, uh, how are you doing today, sir? Very good. Very okay. Good, very good. Uh, Curtis and uh, Pastor Curtis and Mama Martita and Chris are regulars here, but uh, I have asked Mr. John Santiago to join us today uh, because he's got a lot to say about Halloween. And uh, basically, we're going to get into it. And also, we cannot forget our friend, our confidant, (laughs) Chad Chad Esslinger. That's right. And by the way, I want to state that uh, we are live on the air, and this program will be aired in uh, WJYM in Columbus, Ohio. No, no, right? Bowling Green, Ohio. Bowling Green, Ohio. So we want to say welcome to them, and we're glad that you uh, that you have joined us for Powerhouse Club Triple Time for Kids. We are live on the air. Our phone number is 504-768-3688 if you want to give us a call. You have a comment or an opinion about Halloween. Basically, we already know that Halloween is an evil, evil day, and anyone uh, who celebrates it, a Christian who celebrates it, should not take part. Uh, we're saying that we they should not take part in this so-called Halloween day. Now, we talked about at what basically happens during Halloween. Uh, this is basically a day for the witches, a day for warlocks, a day for sorcerers to get together and to have that. Some, some kid told me um, I was having chapel the other day and I said, what do you think about when you hear the word uh, Halloween? And the kids uh, asked me or told me that it's an evil day. Their responses were evil day. It's not a good day. It's Satan's day. They told me uh, one kid even told me it's Satan's birthday. So uh, you, you know all of these all of these things that we're we're talking about uh, boils down to one thing: it is not a day uh, that Christians should be celebrating because it is a day where witches and warlocks and all these wonderful uh, not wonderful excuse my language uh, all these uh, things that are happening uh, in this world it 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 does not represent a very good thing. What does Halloween represent? The Druids, I'm going to talk about this in a little bit. The Druids were pagan priests of an early Celtic religion. Druids are mentioned by name in 35 references in Greek and Roman writers between the 2nd century BC and the 4th century AD. They were a barbaric order, dreaded for their power and bloodthirstiness. They certainly appear they certainly appear as lawgivers as being directly concerned with animal and human sacrifices. Now this is a quote by uh, Cavendish, who is an ex-witch, or an ex, I should say, John Cavendish is is an ex-warlock. And uh, this was his book, Man, Myth, and Magic. This is by an ex-witch. And uh, he's telling us some things that were happening uh, during this time. Uh, They were, of course, the sole interpreters, talking about the Druids, of religion. They determined all this uh, disputes by a final and unalterable decision and had the power of inflicting the punishment of death. And indeed, their altar streamed with the blood of human victims. Holocausts of men, women and children enclosed in large towers of wicker work were sometimes sacrificed as burnt offerings to their superstition, which were at the same time intended to enhance the consideration of priests who were an ambitious race delighting in blood. Now, this was also another woman who is an ex-witch, and her name was Lady Queensborough, Occult Theocracy. This comes from her book. So these things happen in during Halloween. Mm-hmm. Now, what does Halloween represent? The trick or treating, all these other things, and 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 uh, the Halloween, the bobbing for apples, and all. What do these traditions represent? Now, that's why I have John here. That's why I have this panel here. <coughs> we talked about it last week. Let's talk about it today. Anybody? Let's start. John. Well. First of all, I want to praise and thank God for being a child of Jesus Christ, Amen. a child of the King. I, I, I praise God for being blood washed and baptized in the Holy Spirit and saved and sanctified. And uh, well, the reason why I say that is I want to get that groundwork on on the level here. Uh, Halloween is a is a Halloween is a season that deceives many people, and yet Halloween is a season, as Tito said, many people use it as a New Year 
Anton LaVey, who's author of the Satanic Bible, said it is actually the Satanist New Year, October 31st. Um, before I became a Christian, I used to be very well in depth into Halloween. It was, I mean, it was my, it was my high time of the year. Okay, what do you mean by in depth? Because uh, we've been talking before. Okay, about this I used program. to hang around with Satanists and Wiccans, and uh, when I was in the nightclub scene, and you'll find a lot of them. That's a lot of them dwell there. Okay, so are you? Uh, are you? Are you you saying you were an ex or no, witch? No, no, or, no, no. Because no, I no. want to get that clear. Okay, let's I, get that clear. No, yeah. I, I'm not an ex-Satanist, if anything. Okay. But I was into, I was into the history of Halloween. I was into. I, I used to study this stuff. It used to fascinate me. I used to be into like, you know, the horror movies and before. And I remember when I was a little kid, we used to use the Ouija board and all that stuff. And it all ties into this. So you were part. I mean, you had a Ouija board, or you used to play oh, my with friend, the Ouija yeah, board. Yeah, I had friends that did, and we used to, we used to. Do it all the time. Well, I mean, I'll tell you, a phone call came last week and told me about uh, that they, they were first introduced to Halloween through the Ouija board. Is that how you were introduced? Oh to no, it? no, no! Okay. I was I was introduced to before that. It all. It, I mean, it starts off when you're a little kid. You know, mm -hmm. when your parents say, "Hey, it's trick or treat time," and you wonder what is that, and all you see is the candy and the character uh, caricature of it. So you go along with it. Mm -hmm. And as I got older, I started to get into the deeper meanings of it. And it used to fascinate me before I, mm. I found Jesus Christ. And uh, uh, it, 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 there is a, it, there's a power. It is an actual, is a, it is the power of the devil that is in that. Mm -hmm. And what burns me up more is how we're trying to bring this into the church now. And we're trying to colorize it. Exactly. We're giving it different names and we're just telling people to change their costumes. And mm -hmm. now you're on the safe zone. In the Bible, it's it, you see about the children of Israel. They got out of Egypt, but then they went right back to the borderline just before they could step over it, you know, to have their cake and eat it too. And I just don't understand why that's being done in the Christian realm today. Mm -hmm. But again, I want to give praises that I am now saved, sanctified. I'm washed by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. And I know that this is something that needs to be tackled. It needs to be actually, it needs to be attacked. It no, needs to be attacked. And that is exactly what we're doing today here at Powerhouse Club Triple Time for Kids uh, at Kids Back to Basics. We are attacking this so-called uh, celebration. Right. We have we do not take part in uh, Halloween. Basically, Halloween is a night of 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 nothing but for evilness. Uh, you look around the stores that, that are today. Uh, the stores that we walk into, you see co costumes and all these things that uh, represent death, that represent evil, that That's represent right. uh, nothing but uh, Satan, basically. And uh, people have a problem with that. People just, uh, I mean, they, they don't see anything wrong in it. Uh, Christians, especially, they don't see anything wrong in this in this kind of a celebration, or they do see something wrong in it that it's not Satan's day, and what they're doing is saying, okay, instead of making it Satan's day, let's make it God's day, and let's do our own thing. Let's uh, let's do uh, well. I don't want to get into the terms yet because I want to lay a foundation. I don't feel like we've laid a foundation yet as far as Halloween, what the trick or treating represents, what these old things represent. Go ahead, Chris. You want to say something? Yeah. Well, the fact that Christians are taking this and and trying to like like um brother John just said colorize it or, or Christ, Christianize it That's a better is not new. I mean, Christians, so-called Christians have been doing that for for a long long time. That's what the Catholic Church did originally. That's why they have All Saints Day, you know, exactly. to to celebrate exactly. the death of of all those saints. Well, um that was yeah, they also took the they also took those pagan priests and and col and Christianized them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Those people weren't born again. They still had those same thoughts and desires and devils in them. That's right. You know, and and so it and so it's they're still witch doctors today. It's just that a lot of things that they can do in other countries are illegal for them to do here in America. But it doesn't matter what it is. Halloween is very wicked. Yeah. And if you're a true Christian, you, you you ought to have nothing to do with it. It's it's sin against God. It's an abominable day. I mean, it's the devil's. It's the greatest day for the devil on this planet. And if you have anything to do with it, you, you need to repent. Amen. Okay, uh, I want to tell. I want to read a couple excerpts uh, from what we have here. It's a uh, study that we've done, or that has been done, here at the ministry about Halloween, and we are taking some excerpts from it. 
Uh, let's go into uh, one of the paragraphs here. It says here, it has been held by some of the Druids were the builders of England's Stone Age. In fact, it is still commonly thought that the Druids built the place as a sun-worshipping temple and site for human sacrifice. Many 18th and 19th century authors continue to accept this explanation. However, archaeological evidence seems to make clear that the structure has ex- existed over a thousand years before the Druids. You're asking me, Pastor Tito, where in the world are you going with this? Well, what I want to do is I want to uh, get where the where is trick or treat come from? Where does uh, the pumpkins and uh, the the jack o' lantern? Where is all this stuff coming from? Well, I'm letting you know where it comes from. Uh, there appears to be evidence that they use giant stone carvings to determine the best day to appease the god or the gods of their mystery practices. That day was October the 31st. Sam Hain, the Lord of the Dead. Sam Hain means the Lord of the Dead. Would you like to be celebrating a day called the Lord of the Dead? It's uh, The Lord of the Dead is said to have called up the evil spirits of those that had died during the previous year. The inhabitants of the local pre, uh, local countryside would cringe in fear as these demonic rituals took place. Irene Park, a former witch, repre- uh, presents her version of what followed. This is what happened. The Druids in Ireland would go through the neighborhoods and countryside on the eve of October the 31st to collect offerings for Satan. They would carry lanterns, bags for money, and canes with very sharp points on the end, currently known as leprechaun staffs, good luck horns, or fairies wands. At each house, they would demand a specified amount. If the household would not or could not give the offering, penance, or treat, the druid would use his cane to castrate male human or uh, one of their prize animals. Now, this is where we get trick or treat. You disagree with me? Give me a call. 768-3688. You agree with me? Go ahead and give me a call anyways. This is history. This is where all this stuff comes from. Another version of the proceedings of the evening is that of the spirits of the dead were released. They sought their old dwelling places and stalked the countrysides. Offerings of food and drink were put outside to protect the homes and possessions of the family. That's where we get the pumpkins and these all these little pumpkins being set outside our houses and acorns and all these things. All these things represent that. And uh, you're, you're probably saying, oh, Pastor Judah, now you're getting a little bit too picky. And uh, no, 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 no. Just bear with me. Listen to this. Bonfires were lit to keep the ghosts and demons away. It was from these beginnings that it was celebrated today, uh, that it, what is celebrated today originated. There are many other versions and customs. Some are facts, some are fantasy, and these vary from country to country. Against this backdrop, we can see where our celebration began. Actually, yes. when you hear the word bonfire, the mm-hmm. actual pagan term of it is bonfire. It, it comes be, the, they, the reason why it was, it's called bonfire mm-hmm. is because before the pagans, what they used to do is for sacrifices, whether it be animal, children, or adults. Right, that's what they were, we were after talking they would burn, After they would uh, sacrifice the body, the bones, they would, grab, they would get the bones to light the hillsides, and they would pile them up, and that's where we got right, the word the bonfire. Right. It actually was bonfire. Well, bonfire means bonfire. Right. That's, that's basically what it means. And uh, you're asking me now, Pastor Tito now, we have bonfires during this time. Should we have bonfires? Well. Let's let let me read a little bit more and we'll get into it. I, I realize I'm opening a great can of worms and we need to we need to attack this. This is not of God. And and if you're a Christian, you need to be listening to uh, you need to hear what is being said here. The traditions of all this is going on and how it, we are affected by it and how it's getting into our churches. And that's wrong. Okay, the geysers, it says here, uh, let me see. The geysers went from house to house singing and dancing. Now, geysers, I want to make it clear, geysers were, what they would do was take animal skins, and these are the druids, Mm -hmm. they would cut off animal skins, and they would place it over them. That's where they get the costume from. The, uh, the costumes of today. We see costumes right. all over today. The geysers went from house to house singing and dancing. Their blood-curdling masks and grotesque costumes may have been meant to keep evil at bay or more likely were a visible representation of the ghosts and goblins that lurked in the night. These masks have now been transferred to the children who in the United States 
visit neighbors for food offering which once belonged to the dead or play tricks akin to the legendary destructiveness of witches and imps abroad of the night. Now, this was taken by, let me see, it says here, John Cavendish again. Who is an ex warlock? Mm-hmm. Who who is an ex uh, saint worshipper? And who w- did these kind of things? Now we've got an ex uh, person who uh, ex saint. I'm going to go ahead and say a saint worshipper who used to take part in this. Who is telling us all about what goes on on Halloween, even today. Even today, now, this is what goes on today. You may not hear it uh, uh, on, a ra- or on a TV. You may not see it because they're glorifying it today. Uh, but you do. this is exactly what happens. And these are news and things that you, people don't want to hear, that people don't know, that you have to know. This is what goes on today. You know, it's really sad because here you're reading, you're reading uh, literature from an ex-Satan uh, worshiper, an mm-hmm. ex-Jewish uh, mm-hmm. warlock or whatever he's titled. And here it is. And and this message is coming to the Christian world, mm-hmm. and this man is actually telling us, hey, this stuff is wrong. I know I've been in it. Right. That is just like an alcoholic who got saved and is telling the Christians, hey, drinking is wrong. But the Christians say, that's right. Just drink at your cousin's that's wedding. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. It, 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 it's, it baffles me. Now, uh, I know of some Christians today. I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to state who they are, but I know that there are some people today uh, who celebrate Halloween. Uh, people who call themselves Christians and said, I can't believe where am I going to get a costume for my kid on October the 31st? Yeah. Uh, you know, see what I'm saying? They go to the, the Christian or they go to stores all around and they get they they are part of this kind of stuff. They are part of this uh, um, this Halloween things. Now, you're looking at this and the things that I'm reading today are incredible. Uh, these masks, and it, what we're talking about as they get dressed up, L- listen to this. It says, it is inst- interesting to note that much of the original folk lore, folk lore of Halloween has been preserved in the modern traditions. The goblins, jack-o'-lanterns, children's parties, begging for gifts, etc., which all had their origin in the ancient celebration of All Hallows' Eve. Masks and costumes, which were probably t- also tangible representations of war lurked unseen in the night in these masks and disguises, which have descended to the children who visit the neighbors for the offering, which once belonged to the dead, play malicious tricks on those who refuse them. Basically, trick or treat comes from people who used to go house to house and they would ask for a trick or a treat. And if they didn't have a treat, they would play a trick on them or place curses on their household. God's people perish for a lack of knowledge. And so some people will say, well, you know, as long as their heart's right, they're not wearing the really bad mask. And as long as their heart's right, but the Bible says the heart is wicked you know uh you you have people who are putting their kids in these costumes and they're telling them well just don't dress up in the gross costume just don't do the window soaping don't do the the ouija board stuff then you're okay you're on the good side you're on safe ground Mm -hmm. to me they're still Mm -hmm. close to the skillet there's a standard that has to be raised let me backtrack a little bit and i'm going to close out this the the segment of regarding uh the history of halloween Let me read on a little bit more, and I'm going to finish it up with this reading. Uh, It says, these quotes should make it obvious. The celebration, quote unquote, of Halloween that has been passed on to the children is nothing but a pagan abomination, which is still held in much of its original form by witches, Satanists, and occultists today. And if you don't believe that there are Satanists today, wake up. If you don't believe that there are witches and occultists, uh, witches, you look at the psychic network on TV, which is live on TV. You know, we've got a program out on Friday nights that I saw a couple nights ago uh, uh, called Sabrina. Sabrina. You know, things like that. It's real, folks. And Hollywood paints a, a poor picture of what exactly goes on. But uh, we're, we're here to say, no, it's not right. These things should not be part. It says here, uh, if it's original form by witches, Satanists, and occultists today, ghosts, goblins, witches, human sacrifice, Halloween represents these things whether we accept it or not. Druids, sorcerers, witches, Satanists, demons, etc. All these conform to the image of their father who is Satan. As stated in the opening quotation, witches still use Halloween as the night when they can most effectively communicate with the dead. Now, let's talk about what is a Christian. What is a Christian? Somebody who's Christ-like. Christ-like. Okay. Exactly. When um, 
back in Antioch when the for term Christian first came out, mm-hmm. that's what it meant. Little Christ. <clears throat> being like Christ. Being Christ like. Let me ask you this question. I'm gonna go ahead and, and open it up. The phone number is seven six eight three six eight eight. Should Christians take part in this? How what I mean is should Christians have and I'm gonna go ahead and say it, hallelujah nights. Right. Should Christians have uh, uh these parties, these like alter fun. quote unquote alternatives? Uh should Christians take part in saying, Well, Pastor Tito my kid is a Christian, and their friends are going to be going out uh, trick-or-treating, and my kid is going to be doing nothing. What should we be doing? Uh, sh- my kid should have a Halloween party or a Hallelujah party or a, a Harvest Festival or something like that. Give me a call, 768-3688. If you feel that we should, uh, I'm going to go ahead and state unequivocally, hey, if you're going to do that, let's do it every night. Right. If you're going to do something like that. Why should we take? Pre- why should we acknowledge that day? My point is, let's not acknowledge today. Let's just treat it as any other day because the Bible says this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Now, if you're going to tell me that you feel the Lord is leading you in doing a hallelujah night or whatever, give me scripture to back it up. Pastor, I want to hear it. Pastor yes, Tito, go ahead. I want to share something the Lord, I, I feel God put on my, par- on my heart yesterday and... Um, I was, I was talking to somebody else yesterday. What's the first thing we would do right now if somebody called in and said, my son or daughter is being rushed to the hospital, they're dying, we don't know what the problem is. The first thing we'd do is what? We'd pray for them. We'd pray. We'd pray. Mm-hmm. When the centurion came to Jesus and said, Jesus, my servant is dying, what is the first Jesus thing Jesus did? He prayed. When the Syrophoenician exactly. woman came to Christ said, my exactly. daughter's demon possessed, the first thing they did is pray. The Bible teaches this, prayer in the time of need. That's right. Prayer in the time of need. Jeremiah 33 says, call unto me and I will answer thee and show you great and mighty things which you know not. The Bible teaches prayer in the time of need. On October 31st, which there's more crime committed on October 31st. On October 31st, in which more violent crimes committed, more sex crimes committed, uh, more crimes, uh, more people are arrested on October 31st. More people are abducted, are missing. All these different things. More people are being sacrificed. More right. suicides are committed right. than any other time in uh, every day of the year on October 31st. That's the time of need. Amen. That's the time of need, and that's the day I feel upon my heart that we should pray Jesus on his greatest time of need, the day before Calvary. He said, can't you tarry with me one hour? My greatest time is right now because I'm soon to be separated from the Father. And I I need you to pray in my greatest time of need. Christ needed to pray in his greatest time of need. And my my point is this, that in the uh, people's greatest time of need, when uh, my son or daughter is being abducted when your son or daughter is being abducted when somebody else is a friend of ours their son or daughter is being abducted what better time to pray when that girl's out there and she's about to slash her wrist because everything's coming to an end the pressures of life she's having a drug overdose on october 30 31st the time of need the time of need the time of need that's what the bible teaches so i'm personally in favor of uh getting the christians together because where two or three are gathered in my name in my name i'm in the midst of them and if we can get one christian the factual fervent prayer of the righteous availeth much one christian together to pray effectually and fervently it's great two we send more demons to flight three more and four five six seven more and more and more and even though the satanists might be out there praying even though a lot of uh, warlocks and witches may be out there praying when the Christians come together, there's more power. Amen. There's more power. We have more power. And uh, I think that, I personally think that the, the time of need is great on, on October 31st and that I, I personally feel that it's a time that we should gather together because that's the time of need. That's the time of need. And scripturally, when we're supposed to pray as Christians mm-hmm. in the time of need, prayer in the time of need. And that's that's throughout the whole Bible, throughout the whole scripture. And there is a definite need on that night, and we should be praying. <clears throat> as a matter of fact, uh, according to some history, history is in order too here, uh, they, people who celebrate Halloween, and I'm talking about witches and, and sorcerers and all these people and Satan worshipers, these people who celebrate Halloween, they don't, don't prepare just on Halloween. Halloween night. Yeah, they so have been preparing right. since 
what a year already right. for right. this night. It's a high. <clears throat> it's it's a it's a high night for yes. them. Is what they call yes. it. Yes, and uh, it there's more. Pre- I've heard some uh, people say that there's more preparation in yeah. this day than mm-hmm. there is preparation for Christmas holidays. Mm-hmm. So obviously, we know that we have to pray. We know that we have to attack Satan. And let's go ahead and take this phone call real quick. The number is seven six eight three six eight eight. Hello. Hello, Pastor Tito. Yes, how are you? Hi, this is Danny Lentz. This is Tony Tanner and Garen's dad. Hey, how good to you hear doing? you. I'm doing fine. Uh, well, I was just listening to the program this morning along with the children, mm-hmm. and uh, I was uh, just really fired up about what the topic is today because this is something my family has always been against, is this Halloween thing. And uh, I find that a lot of parents out there, they'll say, oh, well, well, we don't really believe in Halloween, but we just let the kids go trick-or-treat, mm. you know. And that's just really disturbing to me, you know. It's, I mean, it's, and, and I said, well, why do you do it? I said, any recognition of the day is celebration of the day thereof. Exactly. And, and, I, and I try to, uh, to get, and so, well, and, and then so a lot of uh, denominations, what they'll do is they'll say, well, you know, I tell you what, we won't recognize the day or anything, but we'll just uh, have a party at the, at the gymnasium or the coliseum for the children. Well, and I, mean, I still feel that that's still recognition of the day. Exactly. And so I said, well, and, and just laying here thinking, I said, you know what we really ought to do is have church mm-hmm. on that day. But that, for simple reason being, is that that's not recognition of the day, but praying for those that do. Amen. Thank you for your comment. I really appreciate that. God bless you now. Thank you. All right. The phone number is 768-3688. If you have a comment or an opinion, we want to hear from you. If you feel like uh, we should be celebrating this day, give me a call. If you don't feel like we should, give me a call anyways. If you feel a Christian should have any part in this, tell me how. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, um, we're we're having these tent meetings right now, and we're gonna it's gonna be carrying over and over um on top of uh on top of um Halloween. And my pastor was talking about how when he had went off to seek God, God had told him that there was gonna be a night when God was really gonna show Himself strong, mm. and, and and a miracle night specifically God had ordained in this time of tent meeting. And he said the, if the way he knows, he said he knows God. You know what I'm saying? He has a feeling that God's gonna do that on Halloween night, mm. just to show that He's God mm. no matter what. And when we're out there praising God and worshiping God, and God's doing mighty things, that I know that in this city at least that the devil's gonna be powerless right there. You know, and God's gonna show Himself strong you know Amen. you know um that's something that i really like you know when christians are are coming out against this and that's true god is going to make himself known especially to those who are involved in this occult uh, business especially on that and on halloween night you know and i want to say something you know back to anton Lavey, who is the author of the satanic bible this is what he said this is to let christians know what's actually happening that night and how we shouldn't be dilly-dallying around with all this foolishness of trying to christianize it okay. he says Lavey says that on this night it is that satanic, occult, and witchcraft powers are at their highest potency level. And any witch or occultist who has been having difficulty with casting a spell or curse can actually achieve a higher success on October 31st because Satan and his powers are at their best that night. You see, they're coming head on that night. What better way to uh, combat this, this situation than but with are, the blood of Jesus Christ? Okay, are we combating, though, by having parties? No, by not at all. dressing up in costumes? No, actually, you are in communion with demons in that night because it doesn't well, matter now, wait a minute now you're telling me that a christian who who dresses up who says hey i'm taking my kid out and uh they're going to be dressed they up are as having Moses. communion be with up. devils well, gonna be- so you're saying that a christian is in communion with satan if they are acknowledging in any way this okay. pagan ritual. Be- right. If that, I mean, did, did did Christ tell the apostles, "Listen, when you all go in the place, I want you to put earrings on your ears and dress like the Babylonians"? Okay, okay. Hold no, on. he didn't. Let's go ahead. And take let's this. do what Christ would have done. Okay, let's, let's take this phone call. Okay. Hello. 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 Yes. Hey, this is Jonathan. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great. You have a comment or an yeah, opinion? I have a comment. Okay. As far as having these hallelujah parties and stuff like that, you know, as far as I'm concerned, as long as it's you know oriented towards you know good things for God, you know, but. As far as I'm concerned, you're saying that you shouldn't have them that day. That's just like surrendering a day of the Lord to the devil. Just say, hey, this is your day. We're not going to do anything. No, we're, we're not. We're, have it. What we're saying is is that the hallelujah parties are representing that, that same thing, party. Uh, instead of a party, we should be praying. That's what we're stating. But what you, a uh, party doesn't, 
does it mean evil, does it? The, the meaning party. No, see, parties, when Christians come out with parties uh, and says, I'm going to have a hallelujah and I'm going to have this, okay. that is offering an alternative. They're still having candy. They're still having all these kind of things. What I'm saying is, rather than having a party and offering an alternative, let's get out and battle in prayer in this whole thing. John, you have a comment. Well, I just have a question to the caller. Sir, are you still there? Sure. Okay. Uh, if the Christians are going to have a so-called party, why is it, why do you feel that they need to imitate in a lighter fashion the same thing, the same antic that the Halloweeners and trick-or-treaters do? Why do we have to say, well, kids, dress with costumes, nothing gory, please. Why do we have to do that? Just like the uh, the secular people do. Can you answer me why the Christians need to do that in the so-called hallelujah parties? Well, it's, I wouldn't say that it's on the same line as that. I mean, you can buy candy any day of the year. That's true. But you, you know, uh, the, holly, the hallelujah parties that I go to, they don't dress up and stuff. They just, you know, just have fun and games and stuff just to give the kids something to do. And, uh, but it's, to it's totally the, the opposite. I mean, you're, you're going like fire and water or something, you know. It's totally opposite. There's nothing compared to that. I mean, we're, we're you know, having stuff with games that... That glorifies God. I'm not saying have a party that doesn't recognize Jesus at all. But aren't you, in fact, acknowledging the day, though? I'm acknowledging, You're saying, that, I'm acknowledging that I am not going to surrender this day to the devil or any other day, because any day that I wake up, this is the day that the, the Lord, Lord has, has made. made. And oh. I will surrender none. And if and on a day like that, when... When people are doing things, and you know, kids gonna hear all these stories they're doing. Right. What's wrong with coming up with something just the opposite? Okay, so if you okay, so you if know? you're gonna do that just that one night, why it's, don't you do it every night because, then? Because well, nobody wants to party every okay, night. Okay, there, there right. are other nights you have, you know, that you have parties. So there then are you're other nights. so then you are acknowledging that day. We're acknowledging that we don't surrender anything to the devil. We have no fear okay. in the devil, sir. Then why don't you acknowledge it on October twelfth? We could. You can acknowledge it any day you want. What about the 4th? Any day. What about January 19th? <laughs> the 31st okay. is the day you're hitting him head on. I don't, I'm not scared of the devil at all. I have no Amen. fear in the devil. Okay, okay. but see, sir, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is, if we're going to, like you just said, now this is what you just said, that we're coming against the devil head on. Right. Um, how is playing Monopoly going to come against the devil head on? I said games that recognize Jesus. Jesus if, never if did have, that, though. If you have a Monopoly game that has anything to do with like a Bible trivia or something, that's a different story. But we're talking about godly things at a church. I'm not talking about some neighborhood deal with a bunch of people who doesn't recognize God. I'm not saying that. I'm saying church or Christ-oriented things. Okay. And stuff. That's okay. It. Well, I really appreciate your Thank comments, you. sir. Appreciate okay. that. God bless you. Okay, God bless All you. All right. The phone number is 768-3688. The phone number, again, is 768-3688. Do you have a comment, an opinion, or uh, you want to say something about Halloween? Christians. I want to hear from some Christians out there. What do you think uh, we ought to do? Uh, this brother who just called says, hey, it's okay to have a hallelujah night. Uh I personally don't agree, but uh, that doesn't mean I don't love him. That doesn't mean he doesn't love right. me. Okay, we so thank we're, the caller. But we thank him for calling and sharing his view. Uh, Chris, you had something to say? Yes, sir. Um, when God brought the children of Israel um, through those lands of the heathen, do you remember what he told those people? What he told the children of Israel? What he, he said, "Have nothing to do with their customs." Right. And he took mm, them in there right. to destroy. He took he took them in there to destroy not only their customs and their houses, but them. Amen. Because God does not want you to have anything to do with the devil. God hates the devil and uh, and all the, all of his ways. And I'm telling you, you come close so and you, you want to go through those lands. This is where strangers were pilgrims, and you want to get as close to their customs as you want to. You're touching the unclean thing. So and we you're gonna, should not have parties that night. Hallelujah parties. God is not in heaven saying, wow, um, they, my people really love me and boy, they're really defeating the devil right now because they're throwing a party tonight on the devil's party night. He wants you on your face seeking him Amen. so That's America right. is not destroyed. God doesn't want us to crash the devil's party. He okay. wants us to destroy the devil's power. Well, actually, to, the devil's already been defeated. Okay. God wants us to be on our face in prayer. Amen. I, so far, I haven't heard for I've heard from people who are telling me that yeah, it's okay to have a hallelujah party. I see no scriptural backup. Give me a scriptural pa backup, Pastor Tito. It's not let, in the Bible. Let, let, let wait. Let's take this uh, phone call. Hello. 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 
Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing fine today. Uh, how, you have an opinion or a comment? Yes, I yes. have an opinion because, you know, I've thought all the time and I have, you know, voiced my opinion because, like you say, some churches and things, they, on Halloween, what they call Halloween night, they celebrate. But they celebrate a different way, but they still celebrate. Because, you know, like I say, if you kill a person, if you shoot him or if you stab him to death, he's just as dead. He's still dead. So no matter how you do it, mm -hmm. if you are celebrating in a different way, you're still setting aside that day and you celebrate. In other words, Satan has been defeated, and if you, uh, you, you basically what you're doing is shooting a dead horse. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I really appreciate your comment and opinion. God bless you. Thank you for calling. Okay. All thanks. right. God bless you. Pastor The T phone number is 768-3688. Give me a call. I want to hear from some people. Let Go me ahead. share this real quick, and I'm going to give this as a personal testimony. Mm -hmm. um, I, of course, don't agree with Hallelujah Night at all, but I'll, I'll share this. And this is where God is so great and God is so wonderful that um, how we see things and how we think everything should be and how everything will operate, God can, uh, God can do exceedingly abundant, more than we can ever ask or think. When I was a young Christian, I believe 12 years old, and uh, all the way up 12, 13, and even 14 years old, um, just saved at the age of 10, my parents took me to Hallelujah Night. Um, at that time, we participated, of course, in praise and worship mm -hmm. and in prayer. We saw people saved. Uh, we saw, um, I even had a miracle in my life at that time. At that time, I was uh, suffering from severe chronic nosebleeds, and uh, there was a word of knowledge given over the, the screen uh, as we were watching a, a, a tape. And uh, that word of knowledge uh, came that somebody's going to be healed from these nosebleeds. And God, God healed me and touched me. What I'm trying to say is this, that I don't agree with those nights. I don't think that we should be doing those things. But recognize God's sovereignty and how great God, God is. God can do what he wants to do. And God can use that night to save people. God can use that night to heal people. God can use that night to touch people. And for us, just to be, we have to be careful when we start saying God can't and we're, God can't do this and that, God can't do that. And, that's, and it's all demons. Wait a second. We have to be careful because we start to, we start to minimize the grace of God and we start to water down. Uh, we actually start to water down the power of God. God can do many things. God can do many mighty and miraculous things. Not that that night's r right to celebrate any type of form for the Christian to do that. But we have to recognize that God still can do miracles. God okay. can still do a work. Let me ask this question <clears throat> to our panel here. And I, I, I mean, because I'm hearing one person saying that we need to be careful. I, uh, I agree, totally agree. We need to be careful. Is it sin when we acknowledge this day? I want to know. I, the public needs to know. The Christian public need to know. Well, if you can I acknowledge have a it. If I have a hallelujah night... It, or, or a party, or if my kids go out. Let me tell you something. There was a phone call. Uh, well, let me go ahead and take this phone call. Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. How about you? I'm doing great. You have a comment? Yes. Uh, yes. I, me, for myself, as a Christian, I totally don't agree with uh, Halloween or even having a Hallelujah Night. Because like I like was said, uh, if we do have the Hallelujah Night, it's like we're acknowledging Halloween because... Oh. If we're going to have something for the kids, we could have it any, like I said, any day. It doesn't have to be that night. Right. And I totally disagree with the Hallelujah Party. But I think it all kind of stems from maybe the teaching that we're under because a lot of pastors agree with the Hallelujah Night. So, therefore, or, or, or a Harvest Festival. Yeah. Okay. And so, therefore, that gives their congregation the right to say, well, it's okay. But uh, that's why I think it all comes from the teaching that we're under. And if the pastor agrees with the Hallelujah Night or the uh, Harvest Festival, whatever, that makes them think uh, it's okay, you know, me as a Christian to do this because I'm not really acknowledging uh, the devil worshiping or whatever goes on during that night. But as we said, if, if we're going to do this, if we're going to do anything on that night, like I said, we should come together and pray and, and try to bring down that strong man and, and just right. bind all of these demon <clears throat> spirits and not just have a hallelujah party or whatever because I think we're sending out a message as a Christian if, if you know, if we're going to do this or, or go out with the, the um, 
Christian costumes or whatever. Mm-hmm. We're just sending out a message to the people that, you know, we're, we're all about this thing. You know, we're, we're, we're with them on this. We're compromising. That's what basically what it's showing. Thank you for your comment. I appreciate your call. God bless you. You know, now. that was a very good caller. You <clears throat> That's an ex- excellent she has a caller. Po- you know, we need to get back into prayer. And I have no doubt, and I praise and thank God for the miracle that Brother Chad said that he received that night when he was at 12. But I Amen. doubt it if it was because of the hallelujah night. It was because the raw power of Almighty God. Right. God right. that healed him. That could take place any night. Right. We should we should stay away from this. Okay. Saying it's Hallelujah <clears throat> Night is just a way to again. It's just a way well, to have fun and still say we're Christians. Here's another thing too. My wife and I were talking just a couple days ago about it. As a matter of fact, yesterday or no, a couple days ago after you and I talked. Uh, the question she's she her question was, well, are we Jewish? Uh, are we uh, Catholic? Are we uh, this? We, would they have some holidays during their their year? Do we celebrate their days? Do we celebrate uh, uh, Hanukkah? No, we don't. I mean, the Satanists, you don't see Satanists saying, okay, we're going to have a uh, uh, charisma night because they don't want it to sound like a uh, Christian night or something. Right, so the Satanists we don't make alternative well, parties wait, wait. For, for Christianity. Let me, let me interject there. Satanists have an alternative every day, folks. That's right. They he, He's hitting at us every day. Let's take this phone call. Hello? Hello. Yes. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, I, I think uh, it's... Uh, a compromise. If we get if we get together and uh, you know have anything to do with Halloween, we're compromising with the world. And uh, what's your name, sir? This is Terry Dickey. Okay. <clears throat> and you feel like we're compromising when we uh, take part in any part of uh, Halloween? I, I do. Uh, what about witnessing? What about uh, praying? I mean, I think we need to, like Chad was saying a while ago, get together and pray. Mm-hmm. And uh, what are we teaching our kids when we, uh, you know, when we have these things? We need to be teaching them that we need to be praying. We need to be on our knees and before God and fighting this stuff. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Dickey. Appreciate your call. All right. God bless you. Um, go ahead. That is so true. You know, like it reminds me. Well, let's just party. Let's just have a good time. You know, and and, and not acknowledge the devil, but. The churches are preparing for it. I mean, we've got churches out there who offer a haunted house. They offer these houses, these right. haunted houses, and then they say, "Okay, come dressed up as David or Goliath or right. okay, or okay, Ruth okay." Or They're telling you to dress Bible- up like a Bible character. Okay, so what if some kid says, "Okay, I want to come dressed up like a homosexual." He was in Son and Gomorrah. Okay. That was right. in the Bible. Hold on a second. Uh, I want to. <laughs> I, I want to come dressed up <laughs> as the true. Antichrist. All right, let's take. You know, let's take this yeah, that's phone a Bible call. character. Okay, let's take this phone call. Go ahead. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Have you been listening? Yeah. Okay. What is your com? What's your name? Uh, this is Reverend Pierce. I'm with a small ministry, Street Ministry, with Power of Faith from New Orleans. Amen. And from New Orleans. Yes, sir. Oh, you're calling us from New Orleans right uh, now? No, sir. I live here in the Baton Rouge area, Great. and uh, my ministry has been uh, dealing with people that has been in the occult or ha- is getting caught up in the occult. And uh, I wanted to say to the a uh, fellow that had called a few minutes ago. Um, I had attended a church last year for Hallelujah Night here okay. in Baton Rouge area, all right. and um, it was all right as far as the praise and worship went earlier that night. But I felt led by the Holy Spirit to go to the back area where the children were going to have their plays and stuff, and I mean, you know, the little programs they put on. Okay. And I told some sister friends of mine, I said, well, let's go in the back and check and see what's going on, you know. And I said, I have a feeling that there are spirits of witchcraft in this area. And so as we walk Wait, 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 wait. You're talking about in the church? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, there's Whoa. a lot of infiltration going on in the churches today. And we're in the last days, and the Lord said that, that the nations will be seduced by spirits of witchcraft. You're saying that while they were praying, in this, uh, they were praying, was, they were praising the Lord and was, singing songs to the yes, Lord, sir. and then you felt this power in the church while it, it they were doing this. from the back area of the, the church. Now, what does that tell you? Okay, okay. Let, let her finish. Go ahead. And so when I went to the back area, as soon as we walked in, I had two other sisters with me. And as we walked in, I, I looked to the right, and there was a man that had a table set up, and on the table there were about four or five purple candles. And on, on the wall there was a sign that says, Do not let the devil put your light out. And it was on a purple background with glitter. And the little kids were picking up these little water guns and shooting them at the light to try to put the light out on the candles. And being in ministry for over 20 years, and this is my ministry, dealing with these type of, uh, you know, spirits, mm-hmm. uh, I knew right away, I mean, as soon as I seen the candles, 
That's and right. what That's was right. the meaning of it, I knew what was going on. What was the meaning of it? Well, what it is, is if Satan's town, in other words, we are the light of the world. Mm-hmm. You know, Christ in us is the light of the world. And when you have a sign saying, don't let the devil put your light out, and you have Christian children standing there shooting at these candles, especially purple candles. Mm-hmm. You know, anybody that has any background and knows about cult activity, that they use candles. Witches and warlocks use candles for their rituals. And from what I understand, purple ones, too. Right. And That's so right. these little kids are shooting the light out. So mm-hmm. it's, it's, the devil does things back ways. That's right. Okay. And so these Christian kids are shooting the light out. Mm-hmm. And so if, if this is supposed, if this is supposedly representing the light of the world, why were they shooting the light out? Hmm. Hmm. Exactly. Okay. And, and <laughs> what boggles my mind is the fact that you were sitting there and praise and worship, and then all of a sudden you felt this demonic spirit. Right. And it, this, this, this is what's going on in our churches. Amen. Amen. And, and I, I can't stand for it. And I cannot say that, that I agree with half of the Christians, so-called Christians today, Amen. who claim to, to know God Amen. or to, to, to offer this kind of things to our kids. And our kids are being easily led. I'm sorry. I interrupted. Go That's ahead. Right. <laughs> well, brother, you know, the Lord says we're not supposed to have any works, any dealings with the works of darkness. Amen. And when, 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 if, if these people only knew, and I think a lot of these ministers, some of them are unlearned, and some of them, I hate to say this, they're there for that purpose, to destroy Christianity. And to, to draw people into this type of thing, there's a lot of New Age movement infiltrating the exactly. churches. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I visit a lot of churches in the area, and I, I tell you, brother, sometimes my spirit so, gets so, so grieved at seeing what has taken place. I have also been in the church... Mm. Uh, last year, um, it was right before the Christmas holidays, and I had actually seen men collecting money for another pastor, another minister. That, you know, it was supposed to be some kind of celebration day for honor the bishop night. And I saw these, these ministers line up and throw money at this bishop's feet. I mean, put, actually put it down on the ground, throw it down to the ground kneel on the money, and kiss this bishop's hand. Hmm. Now, there were a bunch of pastors. So basically, what the, what we're doing is, when we celebrate uh, Halloween, I know where you're going with this yes. thing, uh, we're basically bowing down to uh, th- Satan, basically. That's right. When and, we offer these kind of things. And people would be shocked if, if only they would ask God for stronger discernment, of Amen. discerning the spirits, where they can look and see what's happening, if they could see in the spiritual realm what has taken place. And I, and I sit there and I say, God, how can your people be so blind to what is taking place in these churches? Well, exactly what the scripture says. People perish for a lack of knowledge. Amen. Ma'am, and, I and re- the, okay, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. There, there are not enough ministers to take authority to teach the people. They are so afraid that they're going to lose their place or they're going to get ousted out that it's like the devil is, is causing them to keep their mouth shut so mm-hmm. that they cannot have the boldness that it takes to rebuke and take authority, so there's so much stuff going on. Right. People dancing in the flesh, people going up to the altar, that's demon, I've, I see these things in the church, demon-possessed people, going up, laying hands on other people. Yes. They, they have no right being up at that altar, and nobody is taking authority. I, there's only a handful of churches that I see that, that the anointing of the Holy Ghost is there. Well, that's what we are trying to do. We Amen. are trying to call sin for what it is. And, ma'am, I just want to thank you so much for your phone call. It has been an encouragement. Thank you, and God bless you now. Okay, uh, um, let's go ahead and take this break. Uh, we got a we got a segment that well, we need yeah, to play. Well, we have a we have there's an excerpt of an interview that Chad has done with this man who called in, and we're gonna go to that excerpt. And after we got a word from let's Chris. go and let's go ahead. Listen now. to the excerpt. There's so many um, different opinions right now among Christians today whether we should be involved all during Halloween. Um, what's your opinion? What should the role of the Christian community be um, in this uh, time? What the world considers a celebration. Well. As an example, I look at the Apostle Paul up on Mars Hill preaching. He came during a time where they were having the pagan festivals, and he shared Christ. And that's what we are uh, told to do by Christ, to share the gospel at all times. And uh, that's what we're doing. We, We suggest strongly that you be a witness to those children who come to your front door. And uh, what better witness for Christ than to pass out a gospel tract 
that the child will read, that the child will, it will uh, draw his attention to. Um, I just think we have a, a responsibility to all of those children that come to our front door. We see such great results from children getting saved. Uh, and statistically, if a child gets saved before they're 18, um, we have better chances of reaching people before they're 18 than after they're 18, and I think this is the perfect time of year to do it. Tom, one of the most uh, things that the Christian community is divided over as far as this is um, a simple issue as giving candy out to the children. Mm -hmm. um, people uh, say that if some people say if you give candy out to children, you're, you're um, taking part in what they're participating in. You're taking part in Halloween, and thus you're giving glory to Satan. There's other people that um, you know, say there's nothing wrong with giving candy out to the children with tracks or even without tracks. But uh, what's your opinion on this? And from your experience, what have you seen? From our experience, the most effective uh, means for the children's evangelism is to take a tract and put it with the candy or put it in a plastic bag with some candy. They will ask what it is. We've had children uh, stories back from uh, parents who say, my kid grabbed that right when it was given to them and said, Mommy, look at this. Because it's different, it draws their attention. They have a lot of candy in the bag, and yes, you gave them candy, but you also gave them a track, and their attention is drawn to that. Okay, as you've just heard that... Uh uh, that uh, excerpt from that interview. We want to let you know, first of all, we want to let the whole uh, uh, public know that we have gotten permission from this brother to air this. He knows exactly what we're doing. He knows the topic of this program. He also He's also aware that we're playing an excerpt of this interview. So I don't want you to think that we're bashing on the brother or that we're commenting wrong on the brother if we do, because we have the brother knows very well that we're doing this. And mm -hmm. I just want to state that first as a disclaimer. I want to let everybody know that this brother is very aware of this from this track company. He is aware that we are doing this today. Okay, let me ask this question. Uh, <laughs> we've been, uh, Chris and he's to say something finally go ahead <laughs> all right when i first got saved and i was ignorant i didn't know a lot about god i know that when halloween came around the first time halloween came around i prayed god would make it rain god made it rain ruined it the Amen. second time i wanted it to happen because i was going to sit there and preach against it so they came out i was in grand isle and i was passing out tracks as they would come and i would tell those kids and the devil's try to come to your ear and say, you can't tell them that. You're you're some kind of bad, crazy freak. They're going to think you're some kind of Jim Jones or something like that, telling all these little kids that this per this innocent little holiday is so evil. Mm -hmm. But uh, I did it anyway, you know. But here in Colossians, uh, verse 20, Wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why, as though living in the world, are ye subject to ordinances? Mm -hmm. yes. Touch not, Beyond. taste not, right. handle not, which... You asked if it was sin, it says here, which all are to perish with the using yeah. after the commandments and doctrines of men. Now, that's the word of God. That's an ordinance and one of the worst ordinance there ever was. And the Bible says don't touch it, don't taste it, Amen. don't handle it, don't Amen. put your hands on it. Amen. Because you're, the Bible says you're going to perish. And here also in chapter Acts, um, it says that, it says, and many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. And many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. Mm -hmm. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. And we talked about what Christianity is. Well, that's what Christi that kind of stuff right there is what made the name Christianity. If you call yourself a Christian, it doesn't mean anything. If the world looks at you and says, that guy lives like Jesus, that's when you're a Christian. And, and, and Brother John, I want to ask you something. When you were into that nightclub stuff and you knew all about that it doesn't matter if a christian's ignorant that's no excuse they ought to not be ignorant mm -hmm. if you looked at them would you have said that's a christ-like person no as a matter of fact we used to make fun of those people exactly we, you know we got to get more of the word and i'm glad uh, chris brought that up we need to get more scripture in here the bible says be sober be vigilant for your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour now how can you be sober if you're having a party 
That's How right. can you be sober if you're playing pin the tail on the donkey? Right. How can you be sober if you're playing these games, Christianizing the game, saying, okay, now we're ready to take on devil, the devil. We're, t- we're ready to take on the powers of the enemy. Now again, right. I, you can't do it. That's we have right. heard. You can't do we it. We have heard uh, it's okay to do hallelujah night. It's okay to go trick-or-treating. It's okay to do all these things. But there is no scriptural backup for anything that people are telling us here. I want to hear some scriptural backup. If you feel uh, that Lord has given this to you, where's... God, when God reveals something to you, he's going to reveal it through his through word. That's he's right. going to confirm it with the word. So I, I, we need to hear uh, what the word of God says. And from what I gather, there's nothing out there that says the word. Okay, let's take this phone caller. Hello. 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 Um, I would like to refer back to the gentleman that was saying that Paul went on a pagan holiday and he witnessed Christ. Now, what's your name? My name's Diane. She's talking about okay. the excerpt. Oh, the excerpt. Okay, go ahead. I would like to refer back to that. That's, okay, go ahead. That's uh, scriptural. And uh, Paul was a mighty man of God, and he said to follow him as he followed Christ. And uh, it wasn't that he celebrated on that day, but he got in amongst them, and he told them about Christ. But did he, he have preached. a party? <laughs> you preached. see what I'm saying? Did he, do, he, he didn't do what they did, though. No, he didn't. He preached Christ. Like John said, uh, did he do what they did? No, he did not do what they did. He preached right. Christ to them. Right. And also, as far as these parties are concerned, you're not doing what they do, but you are doing what Christ would do, even if it is on okay, that wait, day. wait a minute now. Christ exposed sin. Now, when we say that, Christ, that we're doing what Christ would do, I don't believe that Christ would go ahead and have an alternative. Instead, he would hit it straight on, and he would say, this is sin. Just like he drove those money changers out of the church. That sin. was sin. Yes, Get it, it out sin. of the church. That's what he said. Yes, he didn't sin. take part in what they were doing. No, Instead, he, he hit it head on of what they were doing. Okay, but what I'm saying is this. If you can get together with a group, and do the things that Christians do on that night, you know, I mean, like the other gentleman said that, what, should we just stand still and give this day to the devil, or should we get in there and do the things that Christians are supposed to do? Should, I think we should get in there and pray. I don't okay. think that we should have any part as far as uh, yeah, the parties are concerned or anything, anything like that. Okay. Alternatives are exactly that, an alternative. You're compromising. That's what you're doing. What you, what you have to do is, if my people, Jeremiah 33, 3, get called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray. Yeah. Pray. That's seek what my we face. Should, seek my face. That's what we should be doing. And that's what I want to say there. Okay. Uh, Instead of everybody talking about we should do this, we should do that, we shouldn't do this, we shouldn't do the other, I think each Christian should go to God and say, what would you have me to do, Lord? What but what got, is but we've what? got some people who are praying and are saying that God told me to have a harvest festival, okay, ha- told God, me to have a party. God very well could have told them that because he deals with each individual differently. You know, and he may have called one person to do this, and another Christian may say, "Well, you know, I really don't think that's God." That's why but we all need to go time, back to the word. All the time, it 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 will be God. You see what I'm saying? Okay. And where whereas, uh, you feel like I, God may have called me to pass out tracks at night. Mm-hmm. You know, you may look at me and say, "Well, I, don't, I really don't think a Christian should be doing that." You know. But I feel like every Christian should go to God and say, now, what would you have me to do on this night for your glory? Mm -hmm. You know, and like God has told me that he is God and he is God of all. Okay, thank you very much for your call and your comment. Appreciate that. And one more thing I want to say. One more thing I want to say. I think it is a very good idea that when those kids come knocking on every door of a Christian, that that Christian could give that child a track. And like the sister was saying, when they open up their bags at Halloween and they didn't see Milky Way or some name brand candy that they like and they saw those tracks or whatever, they threw them away. Well, very well may be, but there will be some of those kids who are going to be so hungry 
for the Word of God, that they're going to take that track and they're going to read it and they're going to receive Christ as their Savior. And I feel like that is a very good idea for Christians to do, to pass out tracks when those kids come knocking at that their door. That is a very good idea, Sister. What Real we're trying to say life. is you can't take that very good idea and try and compromise it with the idea that the world started. You can't say, okay, I'm going to give tracks and put a pumpkin on my desk. I'm going to give tracks and dress up like something that's uh, light and not offensive to anybody. You can't do that. You can't mix darkness with light. That's what we're trying to say. We're not trying to say not to pass tracks. We're not trying to say to give, uh, don't give them to uh, trick-or-treaters. What we're trying to say is you cannot do that and do something of the world, do something of the Halloween origin, no matter how faint and light-hearted it is. You cannot do two. you got to choose. You're either light or dark. The you cannot be lukewarm. The scriptures command. Completely say you're in the world, but you're not of the world. Uh, thank you for the call. Uh, God bless you, and we thank you for your opinion. Uh, the number is 768 3688 if you want to give us a call. Uh, we're talking about Halloween. Uh, Chris? Yeah, I wanted to say that that Paul, um, he would always come against the devils. He cast. They would always get mad at Paul because he would ruin things. He would turn the world around upside down everywhere he went. He cast out a devil of some lady, and she couldn't make her masters no more money with divination. Mm -hmm. When he went, when he went into Athens, I mean, they all wanted to, they all wanted to kill him because I mean, he was coming against their false gods. When he was on Mars Hill, he preached. He said, "Let me tell you who this unknown God yeah. is, and yeah. and all these other things. They're just man made. They, you, you know, God doesn't need you to make statues and everything." like that and I know God is saying to the church right now if you can hear what the Holy Ghost is saying to the churches Amen. you'll you'll open your ears and you'll hear God say give me a man of integrity because America is running out of people who will stand in the gap and make up the hedge and just like it says in Jeremiah there's going to come a day when God's going to look for somebody and there won't be none to find right. and and if we don't stand up I'm telling you you put on your hallelujah parties you put on your parties and come as close to the world as you can you're deceived and you're going to be damned all are to perish with the using thereof. Mm -hmm. And no man, maybe no man will stand up and tell you the truth. But I know I've cleared myself before God. The blood of all men is off of my hands. And if you don't fear God enough to come out from that wickedness, you're going to go to hell. And so I want to let you know that, that that's what the Spirit of God is saying to the church. Come out from among them and be ye separate. Have nothing to do with the, the touch not the unclean things. Just like the Bible says. If you won't heed the word of God, then you will suffer the judgment. You may not consider it today, but in the later times you will consider it. Pastor T, Amen. I want to say something really, really quick, and I guess God has appointed me to be the balance here of, of at least mm -hmm. part of the panel, because, again, we have to understand that we're not God. We are not God. Just, and we, we cannot understand and, His ways. And we don't understand His way, but I want to say that somebody is damned because they do participate in a hallelujah night and they do gather together, maybe not to dress up or whatever, just to praise the Lord, just to, to worship God. And you say they are damned. First of all, that's sin. That, that is sin. First of all, that is sin. That is, that is legalism. You can wipe your hands all you want, but that, that is sin. Okay. That, not, that is wait sin. Wait a minute now. <laughs> We're not, let, 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 let's uh, take this phone call. <laughs> Hello? Hello, this is Aaron. Hello, Aaron. How like, are you? I'm blessed. Um, I'd like to say that we could take uh, this Halloween issue and take it a step further to Christmas and Easter. Mm -hmm. the, um, the pagans in the Old Testament would worship trees. Mm -hmm. and adorn trees and stuff, and that's pagan. And, of course, if you're doing it as Christ's birthday or something like that, but, I mean, and then Easter with the Easter bunny and Easter eggs, that's pagan. Okay. And um, I'm just saying, you know, if you don't stop at Halloween, let's go all the way with this and uh, get the uh, paganism out because I've been to churches where they give out Easter eggs and... Uh, Okay, but what we're talking about, yes, and we are going to get into that, but what we're talking about uh, is Halloween. We're taking one season at a time here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. But I, which you, it is true, and okay. uh, we are going to hit that, and I thank you for calling. All right. Bye -bye. God bless you. The number is 768-3688. This is a hot topic. Uh, now, let's try to balance this thing out here. Uh, basically, uh, the Word of God says, plainly and simply, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. Touch not the unclean thing. Uh, folks, we got to take the word for what it's worth. It's, it's Chris says, you touch it, that's it. You're, the Bible says in Revelations, uh, somebody get it real quick, Revelations 21.8. 
um, it, it's, it states it simply, and I'm going to read it to you, and as I'm trying to turn into it, it says right here, Revelations 21.8, what does it say? But the fearful, the unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth in, with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And uh, if we have, uh, if we are celebrating these kind of things or taking part in it, I do not see anything wrong in going out and witnessing, folks. I do not see anything wrong in people gathering together and praying. And I don't see anything wrong with this next phone caller. <laughs> well, I don't know who You're it on is, the air. But you're on the air. Hello? Yes, sir. I feel the same way you feel about there's nothing wrong with it. But, wait, uh, wait, nothing wrong with what? With, um... With witnessing people, and on With witnessing and people getting together and praising the Lord. But the Bible does say, do not give what is holy to the dogs. That's right. Nor cast your pearls before the swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. So I feel that, you know, we should pray and praise God every day. Amen. But, you know, we shouldn't be like the pagans and set aside uh, the, the, our last day of October and celebrate Halloween or Hallelujah Night, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think that we should pray up to Hall Hallelujah Night or Halloween, but I don't feel that we should um, participate in it at all. Amen. What's your name again? Pernell Roberts. And uh, Pernell, I th really thank you for this phone call. Oh, yeah. God bless you. Uh -huh. Okay, um, folks, you know, bottom line is, is uh, uh, I don't see anything wrong in going out witnessing. I don't see anything wrong in, uh, in, in um, um, passing out tracks or anything like that. But if you are actually taking part in Halloween, this is a night that, and I believe we all agree on this, this is a night that we need to get together and pray. We don't need to do anything else other than pray because, right. folks, this is when the, the heaviest evil warfare is going on. And we need to, the, how did Christ we say Christ was tempted 40 days and 40 nights. He was not. He was uh, in preparation for 40 days, 40 nights. Uh, Satan attempted him the last day. That's right. He tempted him one day. And how did Jesus fight back against Satan? With the word. With the word Praise of God. God. And That's folks, right. this is what the word of God says. Touch not the unclean thing. Abstain from the very appearance of the world. The, I mean, uh, resist the devil <clears throat> and he will flee from you. James 4, 7, and I mean, 8. There are, there's a whole cluster of scriptures that will come against this. But we have not yet since had a caller who will give us scripture to back that backs up, it up. To back up their comments. And they're okay. out there. Okay, let's not uh, the take, scriptures, the callers. Let's take this phone call. Hello? Yes, sir. How you doing? I'm doing fine. What's your name? Oh, my name is Barton Simmons. Barton I just want to commend y'all on the great job y'all doing on the radio station, coming against this force of darkness. Amen. And uh, <clears throat> because I know what the word is saying, I truly believe that it shouldn't have no, uh, um, no, no replacement on holl no Hallelujah Night or what have you. Oh, you mean alternative? Right mm -hmm. on Halloween night because I know what we are doing. We will be in church worshiping God, and the Word will be brought forth. You know, and I believe everybody, like you read the scripture, that if you want to give a uh, alternative, go before God, fall on your face and pray. You know, till we pull down this stronghold of darkness. But God is not a God of alternatives. That's right. <laughs> God is, says one thing plainly and simply: you are either hot or you're cold. That's it. That's right. That's what. That, that's the point I'm trying to make. I'm not saying that you should have a turn, uh, alternative where you will. You know, have a hallelujah night. I'm talking about go before God in prayer on that night because this is forces of darkness. The Bible says the the spirit war after the flesh and the flesh after the spirit that you cannot do the things you will. And because we are we are living in an age and hour now that our mind are so corner minded and that we are not giving in to the spirit of God, these people think that they are doing something good by having Christian character dressing up like christian character when they never seen a christian out of the bible you know that's making a graven image of things they never seen you know and uh also the bible says abstain up uh, from all appearance of evil and to me that is appearance of evil hallelujah night you know you up uh, you you partake with unbelievers mm -hmm. you 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 hanging out in other words fellowshipping with unbelievers when the bible says light shall not fellowship with dark right right and, uh, 
But what, I, what we need to do, we need to take a stand and really pray that God open these people's eyes, the one that want to have Hallelujah Night. Well, and, that's that's our purpose here, to bring people back to the basics of right. the Word of God. And, uh, Barton, I really appreciate you calling us, and, and your comment has meant a lot to us. Thank and you, we brother. thank you, my brother. God bless you. Let me ask James you. chapter 1 and verse 8 says, A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And then verse uh, 14, it says, But every man, or I'm sorry, 13, it says, But let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. And then verse 14 says, But every man is tempted when Amen. he is drawn away of his own lust Amen. and enticed. And when lust, then when lust, lust hath consumed, Conceived, it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth what? Death. 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 Do not right. err, my beloved brethren. The Bible tells us plainly and simply. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. The Bible tells us to be doers of the word. Mm-hmm. So far, right now, um, it, we we have people who are basically compromising. Christians who are compromising. I'm not saying people. I'm saying people who call themselves Christians and say, it's okay to offer an alternative. It's okay to be part of Halloween. It's okay to take part in these kind of things. It's okay to take part in the traditions of Halloween, what it has. And it's not okay. The Bible says, do not err, my brethren. What ha- What is happening here is we have Christians who are falling away because of their own lust. They're, they are drawn away of his own lust. It is a deep desire deep down inside to sin. But how can we sin? The Bible says in Romans chapter 6 verse 1, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? The Bible says in verse 2 of Romans chapter 6, God forbid, how shall we then that are dead to sin live any Amen. longer therein? We are no longer in, in, in that. And when see, that's another lie that Satan tries to lie to us about. He's lying to us saying, it's okay to do that and God will forgive you. It's okay to do that and God will forgive No, it's no, not. It's not. Why is there such a Amen. big question about these things? When Even when there is a question about Halloween, whether we should be celebrating or not, oh. that's when we are drawn away from our own lust and we should not. I have not heard not one scriptural backup about how we should have these things. Right. All I have heard is it is a sin and it is against God's word and you're going to hell if you do it. Bottom line. Yeah. So but, if you disagree with me, you're disagreeing with the word of God. Pastor Tito, Who's let next? me just say this one thing. Six, About six to twelve callers have called so far during our broadcast okay. saying that they believe in Hallelujah Night or what, and I've already stated that I mm-hmm. don't agree with that. Mm-hmm. But you're specifically saying that every one of the WJFM listeners that called in and expressed that view, and I'll ask the question, the whole panel, they're going to go to hell. That's what I've heard you say. That's what I've heard resp- said and other people say. that I've already heard it, but I just want you to confirm it. My response is that if it's the Word of God, if you're following what the Word of God says, then you're all right. If you are not following the Word of God, then you're not all right. That's not what I asked, though. I asked, are these people that called in, the Bible are they says, going to... I'm just asking, are okay, they going to go to hell? Fine. The Bible <laughs> says, I cannot answer if they're going to hell or not. Every man knows Well, then don't say that. that well, I'm not saying that, Chad. No. What I am saying is, is that all men who are in sin, that includes includes you that includes me if i'm in sin i'm damned to hell bottom line every christian who sins the the why would the bible even say in romans chapter 6 how shall we say then that our dead to sin live any longer therein we don't have to Folks, I've heard uh, there was a segment of Brother Swaggart's uh, 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 two, three days ago that that he was talking on. We don't have to live in sin any longer because we're not in sin anymore. Because that is a lie from Satan. And what he is doing is lying to the Christians that are out there and Christians are falling away of their own lust. And that's the problem today that we're having. People who are going to be offended by this are people who are not in the word. They're disobedient. Right. They're disobedient to the word. The problem is, is that we have Christians today, and I'm going to go ahead and say it. Now, I didn't want to say it, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. We got a bunch of sappy Christians out yeah. there. Christians who say that they are of Christ, but they never even 
darkened the door of the church. Not only that, but they never even get into the word of God. Yeah. And folks, you're not a Christian if you're not in the word. Bottom line. You're either for God or you're not for God. And if you are for God, you're going to be in the word of God. You're going to be following what the word of God says to the T. Granted, there are people out there who do struggle, who do sin, and and that is a struggle, but we're not perfect, folks. This we is just are strive to be like Christ. It is just another so-called fad that is we're always trying to follow these little signs, follow these little funny sermons, following all yeah. kinds of signs in this the Hallelujah Night thing. It's just another one of these things. Uh, it's another example. They've never done it before in the true church day. They've never done it before the time of Pentecost, right. before, present, or in the future. I'm saying it's just this is just another thing where Christians say, hey, there's another way where we can do something that's different. If we're bored or something, it's just something that they latched on. Okay, let's take a phone the, call. We have a phone call. Hello? Yes. Yes. Um, I just wanted to comment in that, um, and I'm, I would like to read the scripture first if I give my comment. Yes. And it's found in First Corinthians 15, the 58 uh, verse. It said, Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord. Amen. Because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And all I'm saying is, I am never afraid to take a stand for my Lord Amen. Jesus compromising is not the way. I think we need to go back to a place where it's either going to be holiness or hell. There is no in-between. On any day that is a pagan day, whatever it is, we as Christians, if any sign we give, let it be unity, that we will be found praying, seeking our Amen. Father to give us answers, and answers to this wicked world devices, not to become part of them. You know what? what? I, 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 what's your name? My name is Carla Cormier. Carla, uh, it is exactly right. What we have is Christians today, instead of going to the Word of God, what they're doing is creating in their own minds, hey, we can have an alternative. My kid needs to have fun. Really? What does the Word of God say about it? Yeah. I don't I don't see anywhere in the scriptures. It says draw nigh to God. It that's what the Bible says yeah. and he will draw nigh to you. The Bible says in James 4 7 and 8 resist the devil yeah. and he will flee from yeah. you. Draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. And then the Bible says also in the latter part of that verse cleanse ye hands ye sinners. Yes. Yeah. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring people back to the Word of God. Yeah. Folks, back to to uh, uh, thinking on these things, righteousness, yeah. purity, holiness. And, and, and God is calling his people to a place of holiness, yeah. a place of righteousness. And what we have is a bunch of Christians who are saying, well, we don't want to be righteous. We want to uh, uh, compromise just a little because, you know, our kids need to have fun. What they don't really understand is that having fun is in the Word of God. Yeah. Doing what the word of God. Exactly. I enjoy yeah. <laughs> being in the presence of the I Lord. Guess. I enjoy being doing what God yes. tells me to do. Don't obey man. You obey, obey God. God. Look brother. what happened with Jonah when he ran. God told him to go and yeah. he didn't go. And what happened? He was in yeah. the belly of the whale for yeah. three days and he finally realized, wait a minute, this is not God's way. God's way is what he tells me to do. And when he to when he did what God told him to do, what happened? Yeah. People got saved. You know, and, and again, brother, again, and I will say this and I will close, is that mm -hmm. in any pagan doctrine, you will find those people walking in complete unity. Amen. If they say, uh, I just give an example, if they say Tuesday, uh, all lights up. If they are part of that organization or that belief, okay, you will find them doing just that. It hurts so bad mm -hmm. that we who have the life of Jesus, the Holy Spirit who is our teacher and guide us, mm -hmm. has so many different paws and flakes. You know, where is that oneness that Christ wanted us to have? That oneness meant we should stand firm for the things of God. Amen. 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 And Thank that's you. all I want to say. I really appreciate it. God okay. bless you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. All right. Well, the Word of God <clears throat> plainly and simply tells us that we, we need to be ye doers of the Word. Don't be hearers. Be doers. Remember, and not everything that seems good is always right. That's right. And the devil comes as an angel of light. And what he tries to do is lie to us. And I am so sick and tired of him lying to our kids. And uh, let's go ahead. Chris, go ahead. Yeah, on the Bible, and uh, Isaiah said, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Hmm. And if it, it, he wouldn't have said that if it wasn't happening. It was happening in the middle of God's people, in the middle yeah. of the children yeah. of Israel. Yeah. And that was only one man that was crying out against it. Surely, 
we can't be the only right ones. And all these churches are out there doing all this. Well, Ichabod for those churches, they're part of the Catholic Church. They're part of the universal do whatever comes. Let's just conform and Christianize everything. Mm -hmm. You know, the devil ain't saved, you know, so let's quit doing what he does. Let's just start following Jesus. Okay, and we have a phone caller. Caller, you are on the air. My name is Sharon. Sharon, okay. Yes, and I'm just called to say that I firmly do not believe in Halloween. I do believe that that is the devil's day, and I do believe that uh, we as Christians that we do, we should not compromise the gospel by no means. Amen. You know, the Bible tells us distinctly that there is a way that seems righteous unto a man, but in the end there uh, there, there is destruction. A lot of times we as Christians we may be thinking that we're doing the right thing, but in the end <clears throat> uh, we are still compromising the gospel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so, do you feel like uh, if uh, someone has a hallelujah party or a harvest oh, I know festival, that is, then it's compromised? Wrong. Okay. That is totally wrong. All right. Well, that's I think, why I say yeah, uh, there's a way that may seem as righteous unto a man, but in the end, there uh, there's destruction. Well, don't you think that th- those people are just have a, a trying, you know, trying to offer it's a good wrong. altar? Okay. It is totally wrong. We agree. There is no there is no scripture to back back that up. Okay, well, thank you for your phone call. Appreciate it. You're welcome. God Bye-bye. bless you. The number is 768-3688. I was getting ready to say 768-7000, but that's not the number. Uh, if you want to give us a call, we're talking about Halloween, the effects that it has on our children. Now, let's... We have already stated what we felt and w- what the Word of God says. Now, let's talk to the kids. Uh, we've been talking to adults. Let's talk to the kids. Adults, you can still call the number seven six eight three six eight eight. But I'm going. What I what I want to do is, I want to ask moms and dads, what exactly are you teaching your kids? Um, you know the word. You know the uh, history of this whole evil holiday. But yet you take part of it, and you t- you take uh, uh, you let your kids take part of it. What are you teaching your kids? What you're teaching your kids is a double standard. What you're teaching your kids is compromise. You may say, Pastor Tito, I don't think that I'm teaching my kid that. Well, you are. The Word of God says it. Can you find in the Word of God where it says, no, I'm not teaching? I mean, anytime you do these kind of things, you are teaching your kid how to walk. And that's why we got the bunch of kids that we have today. We got problems all over this world. Amen. Teenagers today killing themselves. We got 12 and 13 year olds killing themselves. We got a, lo- a bunch of kids, teenage pregnancies. We've got uh, uh, kids being moms and dads. I mean, this is ridiculous. The reason why these problems are uh, infiltrating our churches is even more so our churches than those in the secular world, and that's a pretty hefty statement to make, but we've got this stuff going on. Why is it going on? Because we're not in the Word. We're not getting back to the basic, the Word of God. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. We're seeking first the kingdom of God, and we're looking at all those things that shall be added unto us, but we're forgetting His righteousness. What does it mean to follow His righteousness? His Word, follow those things that are pure, that are just, that are holy, and that are righteous. Think on these things, the Bible says, and let's take this phone caller, and you are on the air. Hello. Hello, Pastor Tito. How are you? Doing good. Who's this? This is Maurice. Hello, Maurice. I have a little laryngitis today. That's fine. You sound good. <laughs> <laughs> I've been enjoying your show as usual. Amen. And you have a comment for us, sir? I certainly do. Okay. Um, we have to realize that the churches that do um, organize a holy night, the motive, the reason why they're doing it is simply to pacify the children. Mm-hmm. The Bible says in the last days... <clears throat> Women shall rule, and children shall be the oppressors. We cannot let children manipulate us to pacify them. Um, I don't agree with um, an alternative. Satan has no more power on Halloween than he does on any given night. We as a church have the power, the power of Jesus Christ. We can't run and start getting together with some pseudo-Halloween night. That's it. And say, hey, this is the time we're going to get together to battle church. We don't affect the uh, the um, Satan's world at all like that, saying, hey, we're going to react to that. No. Mm-hmm. We have to stand firm to the whole thing. I find some churches will will get together what's so-called a, a hallelujah night and dress their kids up in, in nice things like sheep and things like that. All they're doing is pacifying the kids. That's saying, right. Hey, listen, we can't dress you up like a demon. 
so we can dress you up like a nice little lamb. Amen. That's no more holy than a demon. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't agree with alternatives and hallelujah nights and this and that. I don't agree with any of that. As children of God, we have to realize one thing, that Satan is out there, and just because they throw on costumes, they're no, that's, he's no more stronger than the day before. He's no stronger than the day after. Mm-hmm. We, as a body of Christ, have to understand this, that every single day is a track day. Mm-hmm. Every single day is a witnessing day. That's right. And not to jump up and start saying, "Hey, oh, the congregation of kids, oh, oh we as parents, we can't, we we can't handle our kids. Our kids are causing us crying because they want to go, and the rest of friends go, forget them. Understand that, hey, do not react. If I ever get a chance to pastor a church, I'm not going to react to the children's crying because they want to dress up in some costume. Forget that. Mm-hmm. And I just want to say that I like your show, and keep doing what you're doing. Amen. All right, thank you, my brother. Bye-bye. God bless you, John. You had a comment. You know when when. I used to be into the club scene and in the world and in the streets and stuff like that, and I was he- very heavily into it in ways that I don't want to get onto over the air. Uh, but again, all praises go to Jesus for his salvation. But I, one thing when, that I do remember, um, I do remember at a time when I was at my worst, at a time where I was actually feeling guilty. And today I do, now that I know the voice of God and I can hear that still small voice, I know that was the Lord telling me, hey, you got to come to me. Because see, I was, I found Christ when I was a little kid mm-hmm. and I just went terribly black slitting. How old were you? Which part? Uh, when you found Christ. I was in the fourth time. grade. Okay. So in my later teens, in my early teens and stuff, when I was wicked in the world and I was into all these kind of things, I used to be with drug users and dealers. And, and when I used to drink and stuff like that and be involved in alcohol and club scenes at my worst time what i wanted was something to tell me john you're not that bad and when i would walk out i came across some people who wanted to start a christian nightclub I mean, they wanted to start a christian nightclub and at my worst time when i knew if i totally submitted i would have uh, god would have came down and snatched that bondage from me but what did i have i had christians come up to me and say well listen you can just just start a Christian nightclub. And so it, like like the caller just said, it pacified me. I started realizing, well, I can still do this and mm-hmm. call myself Christian. Mm-hmm. Hey, John, you're not that bad mm-hmm. because these Christians are telling you you're not that bad. You can turn this around and you can, you can turn this around and colorize it where you can look at yourself in the mirror every morning because I wasn't able to do that. And so th- this, is, this is the same type of what this Hallelujah Night is doing. It's telling these people, hey, it's not that bad. You it, can still take this and turn it to the Lord. You know, it, just like you said, uh, I mean, it's just like this uh, Christian concerts. You know, we're, we're, we're taking the, you know, I, I had gone to a Christian concert a couple weeks ago, and uh, my wife is, uh, she's an ex-Catholic, or she was a Catholic when she was a child, or and she got saved at her uh, teenage years or whatever, but uh, she used to attend uh, Billy Idol concert. Now, if you know Billy Idol, Billy Idol's the most disgusting man that ever mm-hmm. hit, the, hit the charts or whatever, but uh, everything about him is nothing but you know, discuss. But anyways, she sat there at the concert. This is my wife now. She's never been to a Christian concert before in her life. Uh, And uh, we were, we had some tickets and some of some of our kids here uh, asked us to go. And so they had tickets. So they gave it to us. So we, we obliged. So we sat there and uh, say uh, she was just grieved in her spirit. The first song came on the, the lights and all that stuff. And she said, this was no different. Have you ever seen these performances? I've never, never seen seen them in my life i i'm i've heard them i've I, as a matter of fact some of the songs that they had sung uh y- there were some songs that i know of that i've heard the kids sing here and i was like oh they sing that these are the people that sing that and uh number one when they first came out the only thing that was glorified was them mm-hmm. nothing of god was glorified them and 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 a, a center for a shelter for women and something else and in, in which i i applaud them for their efforts but the bottom line is, is there was no word that came forth out of that. All it was, if you were going to, and I told the kids, the kids were asking me, what did you think about it afterwards, Pastor Tito? And I said, well, if you came to be entertained, that's what you, that's what you got. I didn't come, I didn't, I was, I thought I was going to be ministered to, and I was not ministered to. Uh, my wife was grieved. She wanted to leave after the second song, or the first song, and she said, or 15 minutes, I'm sorry, and she said, I, I want to leave. I, I don't want to, I don't want to be here, because this is the same thing that happened at 
a Billy Idol concert. The lights, the smoke, you everything, see, and the, the glorified. That's the type that and I'm see, about. the reason why I'm saying that is because you know we're t- we're doing the same thing here. We're just Christianizing an, an evil holiday. Christian rock and roll is the same thing. We have a phone caller. I'm sorry, I keep on talking. Go okay. ahead, phone call. You're on the air. What's your name? Meredith. Meredith, yes, you have a comment for us. Right. Um, I see it more than just entertainment, the Hallelujah Nights. Uh-huh. Um, it was in, uh, I was in California for a while, and I was working at a Christian school where they came over with, they were going to celebrate Halloween. You know, they decided they were going to celebrate Halloween, the kids were going to come dress, but the turn they were going to put on it was they were going to come in Bible character outfits. Now, okay. That is opening Pandora's box like exactly. I never saw before. Mm-hmm. I'm saying now, it's almost like you don't want to say it because anything can happen now. We can have John the Baptist's head on a platter. We can have Christ, glory. Right. We can have all. But that hasn't been tampered with too much. People have pretty much separated, you know, that Bible from that holiday. That's right. Yeah. But now when the church starts to say, let's dress up as bi- biblical characters. Yeah, lamb, yeah, that sheep are cute. Mm-hmm. But the Bible is full of things That's right. that could be really demoralizing to watch walk in the door. Mm-hmm. And you know what's funny, ma'am, is that you have the secular world, they're already dressing up as Bible characters. I will guarantee you Halloween night, you'll go out there and you'll see somebody dressed as Satan. They have, That's a character kind of, in the Bible. How about that? And, and his demons. And the, the other one that I hear often is, is when when people are trying to stand for their their stance against Halloween, is all they have to do is just listen to what they're telling the children. It's absolutely opposite of everything we preach. We're exactly. telling them to talk to strangers, take candy from strangers, dress up, act like demons. We're telling them to go out at night. We're, we're telling them everything contrary to what we say every day. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your uh, comment. Bye. God bless you. Okay, uh, we're talking about Halloween, and I believe, uh, Chad, do we have a phone call? Okay, yeah, we have a phone call. Go ahead. Hello? Yes, you're on the air. Uh, Yes, my name is JR, and I was calling to say, elaborate on your Halloween thing. Okay. I think as Christian teenagers, you know, we should set examples for the little kids, because they, like, imitate what we do, and that would be pretty bad to say that we're Christians, and they see us celebrating Halloween Mm -hmm. and stuff. I mean, well, JR, how do you feel about this uh, Harvest Festival, Hallelujah Nights, these alternatives that are offered uh, for our kids? How do you feel about it? And how old are you? I'm 17. You're 17? How do you feel about it? I think it's a compromise, really. Okay. You know what I mean? It's like putting a legal... It's like the abortion thing, you know? It's like they're saying it's okay to kill somebody legally, but if you do it illegally, it's wrong. Mm-hmm. I think that's the same thing what Christians are doing with that. It's like it's okay to celebrate Halloween, low you're saying that... You're doing it in a godly way, you know. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. think that's that's not right. Okay. Don't Thank you for it. your comment. I really appreciate that, my brother. Oh, hello. My little brother oh, wants to ha- I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. All right. Here you go. Hello. 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 Well, I want to read a scripture. How old are you? Eight. My Eight years old. What's your name? Joe Carmier. Joe, Joe Carmier? Okay, yes, go ahead. Do not love the world or anything in the world if anyone loves the world the fa- the love of the father is not in him okay uh what does that tell you well halloween of the world and i don't celebrate it because i'm a christian of god <laughs> and uh, just like my brother said if i grow up and i'll still be a christian and I choose that I celebrate Halloween and little kids see me doing that. Well, they'll imitate me and they'll do it. So what do you tell the other kids uh, who are celebrating Halloween who are Christians? What do you tell them? Well, I, I tell them don't do it because that's of the world. And he's telling me that if you celebrate Halloween, you just it's just like giving your soul over to the devil. So so you're saying that if we do a, a hallelujah night and, and and a harvest festival or something like that other than going you know doing like trick or treating like the like the world does are you saying that that, that that's wrong? Well, is about that's what you're saying I think, huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And and why do you think that? Well, because of uh, some schools when they do hallelujah Hall- Hallelujah night. Uh huh. Sometimes, don't matter good or bad, they still have bad people over there that put stuff in their candies like poisonous and stuff. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And how old are you? Eight. Eight years old. And what's your name again? 
Joe Carmier. Joe Carmier. Well, I really thank you for calling. And you know what, Joe? We agree with you. We don't we don't celebrate Halloween. And we don't we don't try to do anything. Instead, what what are you going to be doing this Halloween? Let me ask you that. Mm, I'll be praying that no little kids uh, um celebrate it. Amen. Well, we're going to be praying with you, okay? Cuz that's what we're going to be doing this Halloween. Okay? Okay. I love you. Love you too. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, that was an eight-year-old, and That's he an put it plainly kid. and simply. Uh, <clears throat> love, what did he say? The the world, love not the world, nor the things of in it. And Out of if the mouth you of babes. A, and if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Uh, Chris has been raising his hand here for such a long time. Go ahead, Chris. I thought he was just praising Lord. Go <laughs> okay, go ahead. Half the time that Lord was speaking, <laughs> but um. You know, if God, like that, uh, the older brother said at first, he said, "Some give us examples. And there was an eight-year-old right there saying we need examples, you know. And um, I tell you what, I, I can't wait till I'm older and, and I'm living. You know, God has heroes, too. Mm -hmm. Superman ain't nothing compared to Samson. That's right. You know what I'm saying? God has his heroes, and we need to lift up God's men and not the, the, the world's heroes, you know. And, and you know, God needs examples. God wants well, examples. and We need to lift up God through those men. Right. Well, it, it's God that makes us great, you know, and Amen. makes us heroes. Like King David killing Goliath and everything. And what I'm saying is, you know, it's like when I'm when I'm older, I'm going to be able to tell my child, you know, it was it, my family was out there in, in, in Grand Isle that night. I was handing out those tracks and coming against Halloween. And every one of them aren't saved. They're, they're Catholic. They, they loved Halloween. And they were out there celebrating it that night. I stayed at their house handing out tracks saying this is wicked. Mm -hmm. And and they, they did not like that, believe me. And I'm cut off from my family. And if you and, and also I mean I remember when Santa Claus came around, that little red devil came around on, on a uh, fire truck and I went out there with a bullhorn and said, Repent, you need to repent. That's wicked, you know. I mean, when I grow older when I when I have children and I and I tell them that, they're gonna realize, you know, what daddy's saying, there must be something to what daddy's saying, mm -hmm. you know, and so it doesn't matter what's gonna be around them, they're gonna realize that God's word is legitimate. Amen. We have a phone call. Hello, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Hey. What's your name? Sammy I'm four. Hi, Sammy. Oh hey. you're oh, this is my son. Okay, Sammy. Do you have something to say about Halloween? We went to go to a library, uh -huh. but we couldn't stay because the workers were dressed up like witches. And what happened? What did you do? We left. You left the, the library? Yeah. Well, why did you leave? Because the workers were dressed up like witches. And it's wrong, huh? This morning. Oh, and it's wrong, huh? Yep. Well, do you love Jesus? Yes. With all your heart, mind, and soul? Yes. Then tell tell the people that you love Jesus. I love Jesus. Okay. Well, thank you for calling, Sammy. Love okay. you. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Well, that's my boy. Okay. The number is 768-3688. Uh, he just decided to call. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? I think he did. Uh, he's See, we've, we've had a battle. Not a battle, but we've been not struggling either, but... Sammy's in 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 engrossed with with this Halloween thing and everything that's going on, and he's like, "Oh, daddy, this. Oh, daddy, that." And he talks about the things that are are there. But we tell, I, we constantly tell Sammy, Sammy, this is not a day for 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 God's people. It is a day that we need to pray. We need to just. Uh, it's not. It's a bad, bad day. And uh, when he gets older, of course, we're going to explain some of the things. And I've even explained some of the things that happen on Halloween uh, to him. But uh, same thing, like uh, for the for the parents that are out there, you need to sit down with your children and explain these kind of things. If you don't sit down with your kids, they're going to come back to you and say, "Well, you never sat down with me and talked about it," you know. Yeah. So let, we have another phone call, and phone I, call. this is going to be our last phone call, folks. Our last phone call. Hello, caller. You're on the air. What's your name? Cora Hughes. Okay. Hello. I'm Hello. a believer. I don't believe we should uh, celebrate Halloween because it is of the devil, and God is a God of the living and not of the dead. And I just praise God anyway. So, so praise the Lord. Uh, oh, and we should be examples for our children. Amen. So and you, because uh, one year, uh, that's when the devil angels does their uh his deeds you know mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh and we had gotten an apple uh uh in a store just just in a store 
with a needle in it. It was the same. It was um, a needle with a big head on it, huh. and as the apple. And it was, you know, it was like a uh, maybe a trick or a dirty deed, you know, from the devil. Well, that's that's where uh, they get these uh, pagan traditions from the Druids and what we talked about in the history of Halloween. Ma'am, I really thank you for your phone call and your thank comment. You. It's uh-huh. been it's been helpful. God bless you. Okay, we're going to wrap it up now. Uh, but before we even wrap it up, I want to go ahead and say that uh, we are in no wise trying to cast anyone down uh, for their efforts. Uh, and, and we just want you to know that we love you in Christ. We, we are not in the business of, 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 of hellfire and brimstone or whatever. Uh, what we are in the business of is getting kids back to basics. The basics is the word of God. And, uh, I want all of us to pray right now in the name of Jesus that God would just help us, uh, and thank the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come to you and we thank you so much for what you're doing. We thank you for this program. We thank you for what you have taught us. We thank you for the word that went out. And Father, I know and I believe that it was your word that went out. And Father, I just pray that the people would be awakened to your spirit and uh, Lord, that they would see and realize how they need to get into your word. And Father, I just pray for every single person in here that you would continue to anoint them and the listeners continue to anoint them we love you and we praise you in jesus name we pray and all god's people said amen and we love you god bless you we'll see you next week for more of kids back to basics we hope you've enjoyed this week's kids back to basics if there's a topic or a guest that you would like on kids back to basics give us a call the number is 768-3688 we thank you god bless you and we'll see you next week for more of Kids Back to Basics.